The Lord truly does work in mysterious ways. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion, a very late evening devotion. Did not know I was going to be spending the whole day in the ER, but let me summarize this as quick as I can because there's a testimony already attached to this, a praise report already attached to this. And our verse tonight couldn't be any more perfect. So uh, my dad's had AFib for a long time. He had a heart valve replaced in 2005. Um, he's had AFib not that long, but for a couple of years. That, that It's near the end of its service life. Um, when he got AFib, they, they took a, they did the shock treatment. Didn't take, two days later it was gone. Nobody's been paying attention to it since. They just check it every now and then, but no other doctors have wanted to look at it. Okay. So that brings us to today. He goes to his doctor. He's seen his GI doctor. They said, your heart rate's at 150. You're going to the ER. Took him to the ER there at the VA. They called me, had me come down, and uh, we're watching everything. We're talking. Of course, his heart rate's acting crazy, jumping all around. So I didn't go right away and put the post on the community tab. I posted that post on the community tab and actually... Uh, uh, hearted one of somebody who had already commented on it. I started praying then and glorifying the Lord and praising him and thanking him in advance. 30 minutes, 35 minutes later, two doctors come in, heart doctors. Maybe it was a little more than that. Two heart, two pulmonary doctors come in and they're like, oh yeah, we've seen this before. You have AFib. We know, we, we, we know what to do to fix it. In fact, we got a doctor here that's waiting on some equipment that can fix it permanently, but we're going to take care of you tomorrow. So we're going to keep you tonight and we're going to shock it tomorrow, but we're going to give you medication to keep you out of AFib because you need to be out of AFib. And both these doctors were very confident, very well-spoken, very nice. And they assured us tomorrow, we're going to make it all go away. We're going to fix it like it should be. Should have been fixed a long time. So, And I'm summarizing here. So I prayed. I posted the, the community tab post. I prayed. And then, and I'd asked the Lord, Lord, heal his heart. Heal him so he can get out of here. So he, he can be stronger and bolder and have more reason to glorify you. So what did the Lord do? Sends two doctors down to fix his heart. Is that not the most amazing response? Now, a lot of people may say, well, this, well, that. I'm calling that prayers answered. And you know what? I mean, and they were like, we're confident. We're going to fix your heart tomorrow. We're going to get that AFib gone, and you're going to be a whole lot better. We're going to readjust your meds. We're going to fix all this stuff. They were like, this is what we're going to do. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> About time somebody paid attention. My dad relaxed, and they got him in a room. They're feeding him. They're taking care of him. And so, and right away, I'm going to thank you guys all in advance and thank you all who have already prayed, but thank you all in advance for your prayers. The Lord already is responding. Our verse tonight is Acts 27, 23, for there stood by me this night, the angel of God. And it just dawned on me. <laughs> now I know why I went the, a different way home. My normal way to go home is South 410 because there's way less traffic. South 410, when I got ready to leave off of Babcock Road, South 410 was backed up from 1604. Any of you that live in Texas know what I'm talking about. All the way to Trader's Village on this side of San Antonio. Bumper to bumper, barely moving. So I spun around and immediately I was like, I'm going to the highway and going home. I made it home in less than an hour. And it should have taken me about four hours with the traffic the way it was. It just dawned on me that that, that, that happened. Because I don't ever go the other way because there's so much traffic. There was no traffic this time. For there stood by me this night the angel of God. Amazing, amazing, amazing. For there stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong and to whom I serve. Stop right there. Did you hear what he just said? Y'all are about to get a whole bunch of excitement here. I'm, I just, I'm going to apologize in advance. I love it when this stuff happens. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Amazing. Let's get some context. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, 
Okay, we're going to start here in verse 20. Now, when ne neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, it was cloudy, and no small tempest beat on us, all hope that we would be saved was finally given up. But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me, and not have sailed from Crete, and incurred this disaster and loss. And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar, and indeed God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore take heart, men, for I believe, God, that it will be just as it was told me. For I believe, God, that it will be just as it was told me. However, we must run aground on a certain island. Uh, the Lord said it, I believe it. Tempest and long darkness coupled with imminent risk of shipwreck had brought the crew of the vessel into a sad case. One man alone among them remained perfectly calm, and by his word the rest were reassured. You can be the confidence of other people by merely believing the Lord and standing in that confidence. Paul was the only man who had heart enough to say, Sirs, be of good cheer. There were veteran Roman legionnaires on board and brave old mariners, and yet their poor Jewish prisoner had more spirit than they all. He had a secret friend who kept his courage up. The Lord Jesus dispatched a heavenly messenger to whisper words of consolation in the ear of his faithful servant. Therefore, he wore a shining countenance and spake like a man at ease. Why was he at ease? Because the Lord has control of everything. And no matter what, it will always work for the good of those that love him. If we fear the Lord, we may look for timely interpositions when our case is at its worst. Angels are not kept from us by storms or hindered by darkness. Seraphs think it no humiliation to visit the poorest of the heavenly family. If angels' visits are few and far between at ordinary times, they shall be frequent in our nights of tempest and tossing. Friends may drop from us when we are under pressure, but our intercourse with the inhabitants of the angelic world shall be more abundant and in the strength of love words brought to us from the throne by the way of Jacob's ladder. We shall be strong to do exploits. Dear reader, is this an hour of distress with you? Bingo. More for my father, because he's the one in the hospital. Then ask for peculiar help. Jesus is the angel of the covenant, and if his presence be now earnestly sought, it will not be denied. What that presence brings in heart, cheer those, remember who. All right, in... I think I read that wrong. What that present brings in heart cheer, those remember who, like Paul, have had the angel of God standing by them in a night of storm when anchors would no longer hold and rocks were nigh. O angel of my God, be near. Amid the darkness, hush my fear. Loud roars the wild tempestuous sea. Thy presence, Lord, shall comfort me. I can do nothing but say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I glorify him because he is worthy. There are people out there that would look at the circumstance that I'm dealing with right now and that my father is dealing with, and they'll say, oh, that's just by chance. Really? Because he's had that AFib for, AFib for over two years and, and no doctor, and he's been seen by doctors constantly. No doctor has talked about this except for one time and then they didn't do it again. These doctors came in and like, we already know what's going on. We've seen this before. We got you covered. And we got a doctor here. That is the best in his field of a specific type of procedure. He said, we're just waiting on the equipment. And when it gets here, I'm, I'm positive you're going to be on the list to get this procedure. And it is groundbreaking procedure to fix AFib. Literally repair the heart. Amazing. He said, he said there's no reason why you should, be, you should live like this. We're going to take care of you tomorrow. I mean, I can stand here and say, for there stood by me this night the angel of God. Who is the angel of God? Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, he was always referred to as the angel of God. In the New Testament, he is still the angel of God. He is the angel of mercy, the angel of salvation, the angel of truth, the angel of help. Can we not stand and say, the angel of God stood by me this night. 
when things look terrible and things are falling apart around us, when the direst of circumstances are happening, in the name of God, I proclaim the name of the angel of God, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, in whom I believe, I trust, and I hope. Lord, may we be able to obey your word and proclaim these things boldly before others. May we stand in the harshest and darkest of circumstances, no matter what happens, stand and stay at peace, with peace. The Lord will care for us. Don't worry. In the worst of circumstances, we, we should be able to smile. And may we do so. Smile. And when others ask us why we're smiling, then they ask us about the joy within us. We say, because the light of the Lord is within me. His spirit comforts me. How can we be sad? How can we look down? How can we be distraught when the Lord himself not only has saved us, stands by us, comes to our aid, helps us, leads us, cares for us, lifts us up, and takes us away? How can we not glorify him for that? I literally, and in all five years, just over five years, I've been doing this on YouTube, and it never ceases to amaze me and excite me when the Lord answers prayer, and it is a direct answer to the prayer. I literally prayed for him to fix his heart. These guys came in, we're going to fix your heart. You can't get any more specific than that. People that don't believe, this isn't for you then. You shouldn't even be listening to this. For those of us that do believe, it is the glory of the Lord. It is the salvation of the Lord. It is to his praise, honor, and glory that we sing his praises because he cares for us, because he looks out for us, because he's there always watching us. And, and like the Bible says, all things work for the good of those that love him. So no matter what it is, it works for our good. It is a blessing because he is the one structuring our path. He is the one that is monitoring all the events that happen, making sure that they lead us exactly where he wants us. If we belong to him, our future is certain. We have eternal life abiding for each and every one of us. And along this path, getting to that point, the Lord is always there. Uh, again, I apologize for my excitement. I love when this happens. I love when this happens because it, it, it just, I mean, we should be able to be very excited when we see this happen, that's a direct answer. And then to have a verse like this as our evening devotion. I, I mean, the Lord is speaking. Thank you, Lord. Lord, may we glorify you in all good things. May we be blessed in all good things and godly things. And may we glorify you, bless you, praise you, and honor you in everything we do in this life. And may we keep watching for the day when you come and keep watching and eagerly expecting you and putting our hope and trust in you for all things. Because you are worthy. We belong to you. And you belong to us. And you're coming for us just like you said. So no matter what happens in this life, it is irrelevant. Because what's waiting for us in the next one so overshadows anything of this life that it shouldn't even be remembered when we step into the new one. Lord, make us to look to you for all things. Make us to believe. Make us to trust. Make us to know and understand all this so that we all stand and clearly glorify you and identify who our Savior is to any and all people who would listen. And if they won't listen, we'll tell them anyway. Thank you, Lord, for your perfect answer to the, my prayer. Thank you, Lord, for these brothers and sisters who pray with me, this wonderful prayer team. It, it has never ceased to amaze me how quickly everybody responds and how much you respond to it. So in your name, Lord, I bless my brothers and sisters. And I pray that you bless them too. I pray that you bless my father, bless him, bring him out of the hospital, healed and stronger, that he may glorify you all the more and give him a testimony. And Lord, you're worthy of your kingdom. I pray you come into your riches, come into your kingdom, come into your glory, and that we may be there to see you in your glory, that we may be with you in your glory. In your name, Lord, I pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for Evening Devotion. I mean, 
I think I've said everything I can say. There's nothing more I can add to this. Incredible. Incredible. I am so thankful for you guys that you would join me in prayer. I mean, the Lord responded so fast. I think it's just, he's, he's encouraging us. He's showing us he's still there. And he's encouraging us. And I'm going to get to take this and encourage my dad with it. Mm. How, how can we ignore this? How can we ignore so great a salvation? How can we ignore the Lord when he is so active? You see the new stuff they found at the, at the Nineveh site? They found Nineveh. See the new stuff they found there? Proves the Bible true again. Four different relics. Prove the Bible perfectly true. Amazing. <clears throat> Nineveh was thought to be wiped out and unfindable. They found it. We have a God that cares for us, that watches over us and has his finger on the pulse of every single thing that's happening here. It will be done according to his will. And in Jesus' name, may his will be done in all things. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I'm sorry this is so late, but I think it was perfectly put this way by the Lord. There's a reason why it's late, and it was to give this testimony, to have this praise report, to add on to it. The Lord blesses me greatly. I love you all. I'll see you in the next video.